Ugh. And I was just, oh, it was intense. It was probably one of the hardest things I've been through that I couldn't do by myself because I went out to do it by myself. And did that my pain, trauma. I mean, uh, the first time that I've ever had to lean on anybody spiritually and energetically, rage and anger. Like no my far no welcome family bienvenidos la familia my name is Cyrus and welcome back to my channel today I have a bit of a treat that I want to share with you such a such a powerful story this will be a, a significant catalyst pivotal point in my life this story here and this is the story of my first ego death with mother ayahuasca what's even more special about today is I found my original video diary of the day after. I didn't even know I had it. I actually found it like three, three, four weeks ago when I was clearing out my iCloud media. And I actually recorded a whole nother video of me talking about this. But then I remembered that I had this video log. So I watched it through and I was like, um, that's the video that's gonna be posted. So I'm gonna share with you the raw and cut version, the raw and cut reflection of my of the day after the ceremony of my first ego death with Mother Ayahuasca. So, first, let's talk about what is an ego death. Um, for me, what is an ego death? It is the death of the ego. It is the death of identity. It is the death of the self. Quite often in today's society, there's a bit of, uh, in my perspective, a no-no when we talk about death. And there's not as much comfort with the concept of death and rebirth. And so, therefore, when we're meeting or encouraging an a internal spiritual mental emotional death it's very unknown it's terrifying because it's no longer a part of our today's customs whereas in our indigenous ancient times death and rebirth were a part of life and quite often this death and rebirth which was a rite of passage was quite often uh, facilitated around the ages of 13 and 14, because that's when we go through puberty for both men and women. What I feel is interesting from my own learning is that women have an internal rites of passage because around the ages of 13 and 14, they have their first bleed. And in the essence of the feminine, it's an internal, it's an emotional, spiritual being, right? On the other hand, for men, quite often identified as the physical and the mental part of the human reality is we don't have that internal rites of passage. So we have to go outside to seek a rites of passage external. And so quite often you'll hear the story of the man going out to the jungle and slaying the dragon or the demon and surviving one night. But what that actually means, it's a metaphor for slaying the inner dragon, the inner demons, the shadow self, that, I, that is the immature man, the boy that is scared to, to step up, that is scared to step forward with bravery and courage. And so therefore, we have to create these experiences of immense challenge and adversity for the, men to, for the men's inner boy to rise up and therefore be killed and be transformed and involved into the man, or at least the adolescent man. And so when I speak of an ego death, it is... The ego here, my identity, so what you can imagine is that ego is like a container and the identity is all of my personal traits, my beliefs, my values, how I approach things. And when we come to an ego death by meeting something that's really challenging, it dies, the identity dies with it and then we get to be born anew and we get to create a new identity because in my perspective the ego feels safe when it's settled in its identity so once it comes to know the identity it would stay there and it will not move 
So all we want to do is strip that container of ego, kill that ego, so then a new part of the identity can be birthed, and then the ego will be like, ah, oh, this is my new identity, and find safety within that. So ego death is a rebirth of the new self. So, that's my perspective on an ego death. What I'm going to share with you is this beautiful magical story of my ego death with Mother Ayahuasca in the raw, uncut reflection. So, enjoy. Whew. So, um, so, the other night I did my third Ayahuasca session. Um, so I did two back to back and I did one last month. Um, so leading into the third session, I felt like I wasn't done with the first session. There was still a lot to purge and release. Um, and let's just say the third session was intense. It was crazy. Um, so I was getting this weird energy circling around my, um, my solar plexus, my root and my sacral. And, um. And um, I was like, oh, I think I just I think I'm gonna have a good purge. Um, and then after the second cup, you know, I was in a nice chill state. I was pretty relaxed. And then, um, man, the second cup just I started feeling all this, all this, this weird pain in my stomach and the deep root of my stomach, and then. I ended up going, I ended up, I was sitting upright and then I like needed to lie down and curl up and man, what, what's, it was probably one of the hardest things I've been through ever. Like what was coming up, Just pain, trauma, um, rage and anger, but it felt like it wasn't even mine. It felt like it was generational, ancestral, past life trauma that no longer that was trying to come out and I was like okay cool I, I got up and I left the, the space because I needed to go outside to purge it and man it was one of the I just the stuff was trying to come out and I was like deep deep dry reaching like crazy and then this, all this pain and I, I started breaking down like it was like it was painful and I had no idea where it came from um, and I was trying to as I was trying to purge I was like getting stuck I was getting stuck in my throat um, and I just wouldn't come out and then and then I realized in that moment that I couldn't do it by myself because I went out to do it by myself and in that moment it was first time that I've ever had to lean on anybody spiritually and energetically usually lean on my guides and my own higher self but this time my guides and my higher self um, and also I am mother ayahuasca they all kind of stepped back and held space for me um, and they said this is what you need to do what you need you need to go back in and get support from those people that are there with you on earth those people that are there with you in the physical realm and I needed support, I needed help. So I went back in and I asked energetically if I for support because everyone's going through their own journey. And I was just going through it. I was trembling, I was shaking, I was whimpering, I was like having a burst of this like, this inner wolf coming out. Like I felt like I was transforming, like I was, I was like, <sighs> and then at the same time, there's pain coming out, and then I was trying to purge, <sighs> and I was just, oh, it was intense. And each time, like as I was going through it, I was welcoming it because, man, this is what has, this is the work you have to do. Um, and I was always, I always step out and be like, this is intense, but I'm grateful, and I'm here with love and joy, and. I, uh, I, I want, I need this, this is what this, my guides and spirit, and, I, and Mother Aya was saying, this is what you need, you 
want to get to the next level of where you want to go. And so this was like, like if you don't know ayahuasca, ayahuasca is a six hour session. So I'm going through this for like five hours of just trembling, pain, whimpering, crying, rage, this inner wolf. This, I was like very animalistic. And I've literally, if you've ever seen a, a werewolf transform from a human to a werewolf for the first time, I felt like I was, my energetic body was breaking, breaking, not just my energetic body, it was like my energetic body for lifetimes was just getting broken and broken and broken. All the, all the ancestral generation shit, generation shit that no longer served me was getting broken, broken. I was just pulling out. It was like, if you can imagine the root chakra, and then what I had was this long bind, this root stretching down. I was going back in time. It was going so deep. And I was just trying to pull it out. It was so intense. Man, it was crazy. Um, like, it was one of the hardest things ever. But I would do it again and again and again to do the work, to become a better version of me, physically, mentally, spiritually. Um, yeah, man, whoa. Yeah, and this, like, and I felt so held and supported by the people that were there. They were also going through their own journeys with Mother Aya. Um, but yeah, one of the guys said to me after, he was like, yeah, man, you're just like, you're like a beast. Like, I was like, trying to support you and also protect myself because you're like, Argh! and like, I was like, I was letting out some, some vicious sounds. It was crazy. And I was in like, fetal position, trembling. <sighs> And like it just this thing in my stomach, this this energy that no longer served me, this this pain, this rage, this vibration that no longer served me. I wanted to go, just what was coming out, and I was just getting stuck here for the last part. And well, I was just like purging more so energy, just energy as opposed to purging like physical or liquid. Um, yeah, wow. Um, it was a journey, um, and I felt like, I literally felt like I just got rebirthed. And it's like, you know, the two sessions before were pretty, my first session was super gentle, um, like I had Mother Aya on the first session, and then I, and then I basically danced the whole session out, and yeah, it was just like three hours straight dancing to this random rhythm in my head. It was great. Beautiful second session. I felt like I was pulling out stuff, um, and then I was uh, I was hearing um, the beautiful sound of um, Mother Earth, um, which sounded like the whole second session. I just heard this constant hum. It was like hum. It was so loud, and I was thought the people next to me were humming, but they weren't. Um, and uh, it just sounded like the the hum of the earth. Um, so that was really beautiful as well. At the same time, I was just kind of pulling out all the stuff and like all the stuff that didn't serve me, but the, but it didn't finish there. And like the day after the second session, I was like, ah, oh, there's still stuff to do. And then the third session, bam, woo, it was hectic. Let me tell you that much. Wow. But yeah, I felt rebirthed. Um, and so after the session, you know, I felt like my energy body, my chakra system, my meridian system, um, were got reset. Like they were, they weren't activated, but they were in a state of rest, or state of transition. And so, if you can visualize what what it looked like, so you have your auric field. My auric field was like in a chrysalis of white light. And it was just a white light circulating. Then my chakra system and my meridian system, they weren't connected. And they were in transition and they were just like waiting there in a state of transition and vibration, vibration was transition. And what came to me, the download was, um, cool, what I need to do is I need to restructure my energy body, but from the top down, because I operated very, very much from the earth, from the root up, but that no longer is going to serve me and where I want to go and the impact I want to create. 
So, and also, instead of your simple connection of your chakra system and your meridians, what was downloading for me uh, was that I needed to create a complex structure of sacred geometry in a in a 5D sense. So when you see your when you see the chakras or the meridians, you just see a ball of energy. But now what's happened is now that ball of energy is no is now the sacred geometry of that shape, of that field, of that vibration. And so what I've now created, I've integrated, I integrated very really quickly, which I thought I wasn't going to do. And now what I, what I see in my energy field is not just the root chakra, but the root chakra in its most divine form, in its sacred geometry, all of the systems up. And now I'm not caught, not even now connecting not just to the crown chakra, not just to the just to the soul star chakra, but also to the fifth dimension chakras, all the way up to the 10th, 22nd chakra. So right now I can see all of that. Um, and there's just a complex structure of sacred geometry, triangles, squares, Merkavas, all in all in just five D sense in my chuck in my system. And also I no longer have an auric field, I have an auric grid. Yeah, an auric grid. So this is what I'm seeing now and it's amazing. Yeah, um, I feel so clear, I feel so connected. Now I'm operating from the top down, so which means that because I was operating from a very earthy root place, now what I need to do is because I'm operating from the top down, I need to put a new, uh, new grounding tools to make sure I'm still planted here on Earth, because this is where the work is, not up there. Um, so yeah, man, what a yeah, what a journey, and yeah, I don't I don't associate with who I was yesterday or the day before. Like the as soon as the day, as soon as the morning came of yesterday, I was like, I was in a state of. I don't know who I am. I know where I'm going to, but I, it was a bit of a process figuring it out. And it was a beautiful way of how I collaborated it. Oh, it was amazing. Um, and then everything just went. <laughs> Whew. Um, yeah. It's beautiful. Crazy beautiful. Um, so, yeah, that's that. There's still some work to do with Aya. Um, still lots to learn, and there's still lots to grow in. Um, now it's just accessing the information and the knowledge that can help me serve people and go forward with the most divine love and joy. So yeah, um, if you listened, thanks for listening. Um, I hope this inspires you to, you know, seek out other methods of not just physical um, growth, but spiritual and mental growth. Um, Mother Ayahuasca is a great sport. So yeah, I'm going to play some hand drum um, at the end of the session.
Thank you for watching that. Wow, it's so interesting to witness myself so long ago. Even though technically it was three years ago, it feels like six, seven years ago. It feels like a lifetime ago that that experience happened. So anyway, as always, like the old version of myself three years ago ended with the song, I will also end with the song. If you haven't already, my whanau, my family, subscribe. If you've had any of your own experiences with Mother Ayahuasca and or just an ego death, I would love to hear more. Anyway, tihei. One of the first medicine songs I learned uh, called Wankantanka for my brother Luisma. Wankantanka, um, from my understanding, is it translates to the center, the center of everything. You are the you are the sun, and everything revolves around you. It's not to say that in a selfish ego way, but in reality, only you experience your universe. You are the sun of your universe. And the invitation here also is, are you being the center of your universe or are you just revolving around someone else's universe? Have a think about that. This song is called Wankantanga. So